Right, good afternoon. It is the lightning talk session at the Minute of DebCon Hamburg 2018. We've got seven speakers, um, and I guess we'll just get going. Starting with Tobias Platten talking about Debian on Power9. Yesterday, I know on Friday, I received my new Power9 machine, a uh, Talos 9, and it has an IBM Power9 processor. So the only distro that I know that will work is Debian. Since this is a new PowerPC 64-bit architecture that can run in little endian mode, I downloaded a Debian installer. First, I chose the stable version, but that crashed during install. And then I read-write a different version, a daily version, and this one, which is based on Buster, correctly installs. I can even have a graphical environment working out of the box, and the installer still complains that there is no boot partition, for older power PCs, and this boot partition is not needed since the Talos 2 and other newer systems, starting with Power 7, use Petit Boot. So that needs to be fixed in the Debian installer that it doesn't produce the warning on power machines. And now I have a working Debian installation, which I can use. Thank you very much. That was very quick. Next up is Timothy Josuin talking about Movim, the XMPP social platform. Give him a moment to, to get set up. I think it's a bit better this way. Uh, who already heard about the platform Movim? OK. So we have a couple of uh, people that knows about the project here. Uh, just to present you uh, what actually could be a parallel universe, but it's actually the current uh, universe we're living with. <coughs> Lots of different uh, chat platform. Uh, it's the same thing on the social network. Uh, we keep reinventing uh, the, the wheel 
all the time. Uh, we have, don't have this problem with emails. Hopefully, actually, the email standards came way before all those uh, um, proprietary solutions. So we have one standard, and Google and Microsoft are still using SMTP IMAP and, uh, for now. Uh, so everything is compatible, and then we just have a lot of clients on top of that. But for chat and for social network, it's not the case. Uh, so the idea of uh, Movim is to build a social platform. Uh, in there, we can put a little, uh, a couple of ingredients. First, it needs to be uh, open source for the transparency, for the fact that you can have feedback and improvement for the security part. Uh, so bring some trust. I think you guys here knows about uh, the advantages of free software, uh, especially on the uh, um, communication part, uh, social network, but it's not enough. We also need uh, to bring control, actually, in this uh, social network. So it needs to be simple and transparent uh, on the UI, but also on the protocol level, on the really uh, deep in, uh, deep, deep, yeah, below on uh, stacks. Uh, it needs to have a strong and reliable encryption, so don't reinvent also an encryption. Uh, I'm, like, I'm talking about Telegram here. Uh, and yeah, you need to have so, some trust inside, so having a community and not only a company that you will blindly trust to, do, to uh, take care of all your communication, but it's not enough. It needs to be decentralized uh, because, uh, yeah, a centralized social network, even if it's open source, if it's only one instance, you have to still trust the instance. So you would like to deploy your instance. You would like to trust someone else. You can only sometimes trust only yourself in some cases. Uh, decentralization also brings robust robustness. Uh, yeah, uh, we already uh, saw that many, too many times that actually one server is uh, failing. I think Signal have uh, uh, done an issue uh, recently about uh, uh, this kind of thing. They, are, they had issue with their Amazon server. The whole things didn't work for a couple of hours. Uh, and then resist against censorship uh, control. Same thing with Telegram, I think, in Russia at the, at the moment. I'm talking more about the IM part, but it also can be applied at the uh, social network park. It's exactly the same thing, just that the information that are exchanged are a bit uh, different. So you need uh, these steps, but all those uh, uh, platforms here, uh, the funny thing is that actually I made these conferences uh, three years ago, uh, and I just added Mastodon uh, no, recently, but actually, yeah, we still have like this uh, big, uh, yeah, uh, difference uh, like of, 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 yeah, of, of platforms. Uh, the, it's. There is communication between the platforms, so there is kind of standard that are starting co to come in, as especially between Jasper and Mason, but it, there is still a lot of work to do there. So uh, the secret ingredient uh, is about compatibility, about extensibility. Yeah, don't try to reinvent the wheel again, and don't try to create another social network or another uh, IAM platform that will have all those communication troubles. So having a long-term vision. And the uh, actually secret ingredient is the standardization in these things. So uh, this uh, secret ingredients, should uh, have a couple of, uh, yeah, the, this standard actually should have a, like, a couple of features. Support news feeds, communities, IM, chat room, presences, know who is your online, the profiles, the video conferencing, the security, bridge it to the web, uh, and then need to be real time. Uh, and, one minute, yeah, this protocol actually exists, it's called XMPP. So the goal of the project is uh, uh, to actually take XMPP, implement it, uh, and doing a lot of innovation on top of the project. So server side is a simple XMPP client, web server, simple, simple to install, PHP, MySQL, PostgreSQL. And on the user side, it's also like super simple to use. You need simply a browser uh, to do that. And it's, it's responsive, it's light, it's fast, uh, and it's built actually for uh, small communities. Uh, there is pods already all around the world, and you're already invited to deploy your own pods. Uh, there is already 10,000 uh, accounts registered on the, the official port, 30 languages. Debian package coming soon, thanks to the help of the peop some people in this room. Uh, and that's it. Uh, yeah, so if you want more information, everything is on the website, and uh, you can join the chat room or the Twitter. Thank you very much. Next up is Thomas Lange, Mr. Fai, talking about Dracat. Yeah. 
today I'm not talking about Phi, but about Draycut. Draycut is a replacement for init RAMFS, which is used by most other distributions. Uh, if I'm correct, only Ubuntu and Debian and the derivatives are using init RAMFS tools. Uh, all other distributions already moved to Draycut. Um, and today I want to show how you can get an experience with Draycut without deinstalling init RAMFS tools. Um, ben Hutchison did uh, some patches, I think, two years ago, so it's possible. So what you have to do, there's a package called Draycut Core, which does not conflict with init RAMFS tools. And uh, I have a virtual machine. Uh, so Debian Phi. So on this machine, I will now um, install the Draycut, Draycut Core package. And that's it. We still have one init RD. Uh, and now I can say Draycut. Oh no, first I have to uh, copy the, the uh, to a Draycut version. And then I can generate a new init RD with Draycut. Um, Draycut uh, uses the usual hooks or module system. It does not use the hooks from the init RAMFS things, uh, but it already includes a lot of hooks. So, for example, if you have a crypt setup, you do not need the crypt setup hooks, uh, the, the hooks for init RAMFS tools from the crypt setup uh, package, because Draycut already includes this and a lot of other things. So after generating a new init RD, you update your group and you see we have now two entries in the grub. So one with the old init RD, which was created by, uh, the default one is the, the init RD, which is created by init RAMFS tools. And here you have the boot entry for the new Draycut uh, init RD and it boots up and works. So, what, what, <laughs> what we need is that uh, more people are using and giving it a try. So, in your environment, on your hardware, does Draycut work? And uh, we have a, a discussion like five years ago if Debian or when will Debian switch from init RAMFS tools to, to Draycut? And still there's no real need because init RAMFS tool works for everybody. But I think in the long term we will switch it. So please help us uh, write bug reports or just give it a try if it works for you or not. That's it. Thank you very much. Next up is Tech Kids talking about their organization. So, okay, um, those of you who attended the, the School Linux talk already heard about uh, TechKids. I want to give a few details about what, what else we do. Um, TechKids is a non-profit organization based in Germany, but we are working, ah, working on uh, cutting my hair, maybe. We are working internationally, and uh, yeah, uh, we are uh, completely ba uh, centered around uh, free software and we do basically everything uh, concerning free software in education and in the context of uh, children and adolescents. 
young people. Uh, more than 50% of our active members are, uh, are minors. There's an S missing, sorry. Um, they are, of course, not minor, but they are minors. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry, kids, if you are watching. Uh, so. Um, they're minors and uh, we are a fully democratic organization like in the FOSS uh, spirit uh, and the most important thing is that we get uh, children involved with all the parts of the organization both operational and uh, tutoring in, in workshops and working with uh, free software projects giving presentations uh, normally some children would be here but uh, as this conference was uh, right in the middle of the school time this was not so easy so what do we do? First of all, we want to get children in, interested in, uh, in, in programming, in coding, in technical stuff, but and also in, in free software. This we do by uh, running youth programs at f f free software conferences like the FrostCon, where uh, normally around 100 to 120 children attend and yeah, use Debian and all that cool stuff and learn what they can do with, with it. Um, we do peer learning, so those children who already uh, know uh, many things and are very interested, uh, they start tutoring other children, these workshops. Of course, we have uh, non-tech fun together, we uh, are outside, there is a, a social program with uh, staying overnight, having a barbecue and uh, all, that, all that stuff that helps building a community. Those who are even more interested uh, can get actively involved in preparing workshops, organizing events, um, preparing talks, uh, looking at open source projects, helping others uh, uh, get a free, like, like a free messenger uh, instead of WhatsApp, uh, working on how to, how to spread the word among youth and all of that. And then uh, visit conference and raise awareness. This is our presentation team from the Chemnitz Linux days and uh, they are presenting the whole canon of free software and education <coughs> at our Schulfrei booth, which is uh, school free in, in German. It's, uh, yeah. um, and uh, they are presenting uh, all projects that are involved in this, in, in, in this, in this common booth and, um, and uh, care for free software and education. Uh, if you're interested in that, maybe because you uh, have children or want to have children or are involved in education um, in, in some way. Um, there, is a, there are quite a few things that, uh, that you can do. You can help working on projects, uh, you can help and work at with uh, mentoring uh, the children in uh, coding or uh, organizational activities. <coughs> you can help spreading the word, also raising awareness that uh, many, many software projects do uh, do have some involvement with children, even uh, indirectly, like uh, a web browser, like like Firefox. They such such applications are used by children, and they may have other needs, and they may have other views on that. So it's very important to at least think about what what uh, children or, or, or schools or uh, uh, teachers as well do with the software. Pardon? One minute. One minute thank you. Um, we need help in, with presentations at conferences, uh, so not uh, every time the, the same people have to uh, get, a, uh, get a day off at work and travel to conferences. There's much more manpower needed. And of course, uh, every, uh, every NGO, uh, every non-profit organization is lacking money, so um, if you have already donated to Debian and still have money left, you might uh, want to give your money to the future, which is... Uh, Children, uh, okay. Uh, don't forget donating to Debian. So maybe I don't know if I am shot if I don't say that. <laughs> okay, and there's also Libera Pay. Uh, it's a free, uh, free donation platform. Just have a look at it if you want, and if you want to help us actively, just go to our website, find some communication means, or just uh, talk to uh, someone you find at any conference who is wearing this this shirt with, with our logo. Thank you. Of not tangling. Let's yeah, stick with the. I prefer that. <laughs> Find me a head or something. Okay. 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 Okay.
inspired to uh, tell us all the things. I mean, we did have one very, very last minute sign up. Ah. <laughs> We've got one more space. Meta. <laughs> Meanwhile, I guess I can make announcements while I'm here. Front desk will be available get, uh, again after lunch, as will t-shirts. Anybody who hasn't had a t-shirt yet, um, basically, if you signed up, you're allowed to get a t-shirt. Come see me. Yes, free of charge. Um, come see me at front desk when it's open again after lunch, because um, I. Do you know some people have been reticent to come up and you know ask for one? So. Uh, you make light of talk about the person not doing light of talk, like uh, having an endless walk. I could. I. I've probably given effectively a lightning talk on not giving light. Oh well. <laughs> Meta theatre. Ready? <laughs> I think so. Right here we go. Heinz zwei. Okay. Hello. I'm Thomas Koch. I work for Google. I work in support for Google Container Engine with Google Kubernetes Engine. And Kubernetes, who knows what Kubernetes is? Oh, so few. Okay. It's a thing to uh, orchestrate containers on many, many nodes, up to thousands of nodes. It was started um, by Google, open sourced by Google in 2015, I believe. Um, first big contributor was Red Hat. It is 100% open source. It's written in Go. And by now, it has won the market of um, managing containers on large nodes. I just was at the KubeCon in Copenhagen with 4,300 participants and every company you can imagine has an offering about Kubernetes. Um, yeah, just some logos of companies that use or contribute to Kubernetes and even more logos and the slides are outdated so there are even more. And Kubernetes, uh, you have some masters that controls a kubelet on every node. The kubelet can start containers and can set up networking stuff and can set up volumes. And the basic concept of computation, the basic primitive is a pod. A pod is one too many containers running together in one environment so that you have the possibility to have sidecars running beside your main containers that does additional stuff. It has proven useful in Google's internal Borg container management engine that you want to have certain containers always running together and sharing resources. Another important primitive is volumes, so Kubernetes can manage your storage and provision storage to be accessible to your containers. Uh, you can uh, combine many pods that provide the same service to be accessible under the same IP address and so have failover enabled like this and of course uh, then you have pr controllers that scale your services, scale down your services, restart failed pods, or um, drain nodes that you want to take away. And my question now is, what is the role of Debian in a world where com Kubernetes becomes more and more popular, even if not that many of you have heard about it? Um, I believe that uh, Kubernetes will become even more popular and even as a Debian maintainer I'm enthusiastic about how easy it becomes now to run your stuff in Kubernetes. Um, but you only need a very minimal host operating system to install Kubernetes on your servers. Afterwards you need a bare image, uh, a base image for your container, which is normally also a very minimal image. And you don't do apt-get install Apache 2 anymore to have a web server. You take an Apache container image and then you extend this image 
and put your app onto this image. So you don't need an Apache Debian image anymore in uh, such a world. Will we still uh, need this in Debian? However, nothing is perfect. So on KubeCon, I also saw companies offering, oh, we scan your container images for outdated libraries. And you have long times to update your cluster because all the images, all the containers needs to be stopped. You download new images, you start whole new environments. Um, so there are optimizations possible there. And people are wondering, okay, where does my stuff come from? Is it from a trusted source? Um, and my crazy thoughts, maybe it's an opportunity here if Debian would become a source of trusted binaries or even container images. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Oh, sorry, am I in shot? Yeah. Next up, Pierre Brancheri talking about uh, Manticore, Deep State, and Defera OS. Are you pretty much ready? Ready as we'll ever be? Right. Meanwhile, does anybody know any good dance routines, you know, just to bridge over the time because I'm not going to. <sighs> I don't think I know any jokes. Hopefully nearly there. Ah! Fling my phone from me. It's okay, nobody calls me anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Can't see a thing. I'm afraid I haven't gotten any more announcements. Hmm. We are pleased to announce that there are no p no current announcements available. <laughs> the news has been called off. Do you actually have slides? No. Oh. <laughs> there will be a demo, but no slides. Hmm. I'm wondering if we should swap you around, but... Uh yes, swap him around. Okay, right. <coughs> we have the interval act, an interpretive dance by Andre Shadura on the nature of Git C record being for the win. Well, you know, anything to bridge the time, right? Many things are wrong, but... Specifically, I don't anyway, know. Uh, let me just change it, make change it to uh, a mirror. It will be easier to know. Um, mirror. Okay, ready? If in doubt, make the font bigger. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe I should give a lightning talk about that. <laughs> I think I might, I just at the very end, I'll just later, uh, so disguise it as announcements. So, um, Ready? There. No. no. I, I prefer that. Yes, but we don't. Why? <laughs> Did you see what happened earlier? What happened earlier? Oh, God. Uh, this is off. Please use the head microphone. Please use the head microphone. Okay. Oh, right, they listen to a man, but not me. Uh, <laughs> See, this is the, I, I have the master here, so he has to listen on me. <laughs> this is the endemic sexism. Right. Go yeah. on, get on with it. So. <laughs> it's, it's on, just talk. Oh. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. 
So um, I'm just going to uh, show you a small tiny utility I wrote. Actually, I didn't re write it from scratch. I just ported it from um, anyway. So let's see. We've got a, a git diff of like I've been doing like things with the Devon package, lots of changes, and I forgot to commit them individually. So and now I like there's l lots of patches and things, and I just want to uh, somehow sort this out. So I just run git c record, and suddenly I see I can see all of the things here. I can unwrap the uh, diffs. What, what's happening with the lights? <laughs> <laughs> and I can I can basically I can select bits individual bits of the of the diff, and I, um, let's just deselect all things. Um, commit those, just a few, uh, they were like a few patches refreshed, so I'm going to uh, commit them now, um, yes, like refresh patches, um, let's say just refresh, just enough, um, oh, mm. <laughs> uh, it's not going to work, uh, right, um, because I haven't got a card and I forgot to disable the um, um, I don't think I can. I don't remember. I, I probably can't re, uh, can't disable uh, PGP sign. Unfortunately, it's not implemented yet. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is uh, uh, using this thing. You can. Uh, it's better than. Uh, um, uh, has it properly called? Um, like it's better than the built-in Git uh, Git tool. I can't even remember its name. Huh? Yeah, like the the. I, that one, yeah. But I, 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 I didn't actually hear exactly what he said. But like, get patch something. Uh, get add dash dash patch. Yeah, get add dash dash patch. And there's another one which is a bit. There's one which is a bit more interactive, and one which is a bit less interactive. This is mega interactive and there will be more features. It, it, it is actually, uh, it was originally written for Mercurial and this was the thing which I really missed when I had to use Git and now uh, I don't have to anymore. This is it. Uh, it's in Debian, That's, uh, so you can up to install it if you prefer. Uh, am I not? Okay, it's, it's in Debian and you can up to install it if you prefer. Uh, or you can install it from source and there will be more features later at some point. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready? Now, now, Pierre Brancheri talking about all the things that I said he was going to talk about earlier. <coughs> One moment, please. I think I might just give a talk at the end about advice to speakers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll even wear a suit. Sorry about that. I didn't really plan for this, so I made these slides five minutes ago. All right, so I'm Pierre Pranchery. <laughs> Thank you for having me, even if I'm actually an official uh, NetBSD developer. 
but I've been using Debian since 99, so maybe I'm allowed. And uh, I'm also a security consultant, uh, interested in kernel development, security integration, and so on. Um, what you could not see on the slide right now is that I'm also on the board of directors of NetBSD. So actually, I'm in a good position to talk about the project, uh, if, if you would like to. Um, I would like to talk to you about Manticore today. It's a symbolic execution tool. So basically, it uses a CPU emulator, which can be hardware assisted, of course, to run and analyze programs uh, or algorithms, so parts of programs, on a simulated system. And one of the aims is actually to make them crash, so to, f to make extensive fuzzing and be very uh, efficient at fuzzing by possibly tracing uh, instructions and so on, whatever is going on inside the program. Uh, it supports static Linux binaries in 32-bit and 64-bit modes. Also, it supports ARM 32-bit. Uh, support is ongoing for ARM 64-bit. It also works with Ethereum bytecode. Uh, there are official releases on GitHub. It's already packaged in package source by myself. And I'm actually looking for volunteers to package it for Debian or possibly help me to do so. Um, I'm actually sponsored by Trade of Bits, the developer of uh, Manticore, to work on this, so which is also why I'm here. Um, the companion to uh, Manticore is called Deep State. It's uh, specifically meant for unit testing with, with symbolic execution. It supports not just Manticore, but also another backend for analyzing, uh, analyzing uh, binaries, running binaries. It's, so it's called Anger, this other backend. Uh, which was developed as a side note for the Cyber Gun Challenge of DARPA last year. Um, so Deep State is currently packaged in two separate packages in package source by myself again. Unfortunately, not yet fully upstream in package source, but basically I made one package with some extra binaries and then the Python bindings. This is also on GitHub, but with no official release yet because this is a very young project still. So I'm also looking for a volunteer in Debian to help me package that. And then a shameless addition. I'm also the developer of, or the main developer of D4OS, open source uh, desktop environment, and with some more uh, parts in, in the project. I have about 50 repositories now in, in this. Um, and I'm therefore also looking for uh, volunteers to package that into Debian. There are still uh, projects you haven't packaged yet, as, as far as I know. Um, so since I'm here, I figured I could as well get my PGP key signed. Uh, I suppose that's one of the steps to become a developer, and if there are more, I heard there are plenty, then <laughs> then please uh, help me out wi with this. I would welcome any assistance doing that. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I guess that's it. The next lightning talk session that I'm aware of is at DevConf 18 in Taiwan. Hope to see as many of you as possible there. Um, right. Off you go, lunchtime. <laughs>